And as always, when I start a stream, I will just start saying random things because I never really know if it's going to work or when it's going to kick into gear. As you saw, it was just me looking at the, the screen for a bit. Right, brand new territory. Welcome to Fitness Gains, my very own fitness YouTube channel. If you've never stumbled across uh, this before or you don't know who I am, I'm just a dude that likes to go to the gym. I'm not going to profess to be anything else. I'm not going to pretend to be anything else. I've been training now for 17 years. It's my number one passion. I love it. I think going to the gym is really cool. <laughs> and so what I wanted to do is I just think there's a lot of, um, well, there is there's a, lot of, a lot of dross out there when it comes to, well, not necessarily dross. There's a lot of, I just think sometimes you just want accessible, easy fitness information, right? That's what you want. That's not what you get. You get difficult stuff or things that may not pertain to you or it's too advanced and nobody wants that. So what I wanted to do with this channel is basically come up with a way to get accessible information across and specific to you. So I thought the best way to do that would be once a week to do a uh, once or, or no, no, so once every two weeks, a video once a week, this every once every two weeks is just tweet out as I did earlier from at Simon316. And if you are watching live now, please do uh, ask in the live chat as well. Um, get your questions to figure out what kind of information you want to know. And I will give you my, it's just my opinion, based on, like I say, almost 20 years of lifting weights and fitness and being, you know, I'm not qualified. I've never done a course. Um, I've never, you know, I've got no qualifications whatsoever, but I have experience. So hopefully I can use that to impart some wisdom and help you with your goals, whatever they may be. Now, the first thing to say is there is no such thing as a good goal or a bad goal. A lot of people are like, well, I just want to get fit. That's, that's fine. <laughs> that's a goal. The question is, <coughs> excuse me, the question is finding out what we need to do to get you there. So again, if you've got a question or anything that I say you need clarification on or you'd like more information, drop me a little uh, message there in the chat. Otherwise, just literally, I ask for questions. I've got loads. I'm sure I missed some too, which I apologize. So I'll get to them next time. And we're just going to go through them. As simple as that. So Tizendor on Twitter said, what kind of workout would you suggest to lose weight? Now, it's a great question because there is no specific workout for losing weight. When it comes to losing weight, it is all about making sure that you're burning more calories than you're taking in. If you're in a, well, that's not even true. I mean, that's the general rule of thumb. But some people out there are freaks of nature and they can eat and eat and eat and go to the gym twice and look amazing. But we'll go with rule of thumb stuff here. Um, so yeah, there is no specific workout that is going to help you lose weight. You just want to work out and you want to make sure your diet's in check. However, if you're specifically looking to lose weight, you don't care about anything else, you just want to drop fat, you want to drop pounds, you want to drop your waist size down, cardio is the best way to do that. Now, weight if you don't like cardio, weight training is still a good form of cardio because obviously any kind of exertion you do, any kind of exercise you do is going to burn calories. And the best thing about weight training is because you... Uh, because you um, break down the muscle. That's what you do when you lift weights, you break down your muscle. Because you're doing that, even when you finish lifting weights, you're still going to be burning calories because your body is still in a, it's in a state of growth or it's in a state of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But it's working. That's my point. It doesn't happen with cardio. With cardio, as soon as you kind of stop doing cardio, your, your calorific burning time ends. But, you know, weight training will, will carry that on after. Sometimes it can carry on uh, up for 24 hours as well. However, I think if you're specifically like, I want to lose weight, just do cardio. The question is, when you do do cardio, I mean, as long as you get it done, it's up to you. I am a big fan of fasted cardio. I like getting up, having a cup of coffee, and going to the gym and doing what you can do, treadmill, cross trainer, stepper, row, run on the street, whatever you want to do. That, but it, the, the key is just get it done. A lot of people say, well, you must do it after you work out or you must do it first thing in the morning or last thing at night. If I had to put it in order of what I think works best for me, it would be fasted cardio in the morning, last thing at night or after you train. However, as long as you get it in, it doesn't really matter. So Tizendor, I would say the best workout to lose weight is just to start, just start hammering cardio. As long as that is your specific goal. Don't do it if you hate it. However, if it is something that... That's that's what you want. That's all you want. I just want to lose weight. I just want to lose weight. Get on the treadmill. You know, get on the cross trainer. Start start doing that, and you will start to lose weight. I mean, you're not going to if you're eating a load of crap as well. So it would be a good idea to kind of try and figure out how many calories you are taking in a day, and then make sure you're burning that off. But that's a trial and error process. You can take your time with that. I cannot pronounce this person's name, which makes me an awful person. J C O Lamprella. I think I did quite well. I've never trained in a gym. What is a good way to start? It's a bit of a cop-out answer, but it's true. Just go. <coughs> Excuse me. 
just go because a gym is an intimidating place because A, there's loads of machines and equipment that you may not be sure what they do. B, gyms are full of assholes. That's just the truth. A gym is full of assholes. There's no two ways about it. So it can be quite intimidating, but that's why, I mean, it's all going to come down to price and location and, and things like that. But if you have never trained in a gym before, don't be afraid to ask questions to the relevant people. I wouldn't ask other gym members because they're all idiots, <laughs> in my experience anyway. But I would um, I would just ask, or, I mean, a lot of good gyms have like information written on them. Never feel intimidated or embarrassed about learning what something does. It's, it's like anything, you need to educate yourself. And you can even do this, and there's no shame in this either. Go to a gym that you like, that you, you plan to go to. Take pictures of everything and then go look them up online. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you're comfortable in that scenario and ignore any, if anyone else is looking at you or giving you shit, it's because they're idiots. So try and ignore them. Like I've been going to the gym for 17 years. I don't even notice the other people that are there unless they're being morons and they wind me up. But you know what I mean. If some guy's really fat or some guy's really thin or some guy is just there, I don't care. They're there for their own reasons. Nothing to do with me. So I would just find a gym you like, find a gym with the right atmosphere that you feel is good. Learn what the equipment does. Don't be afraid to ask the people that work there to help you. Maybe have an induction. And I was lucky in the sense I went with mates that trained and they were a few years older than me. So they taught me the ropes when I was young. Uh, but yeah, have a induction. They'll tell you how it works. And from there, just make sure you go. I know that's a stupid answer, but even on the days you don't want to go, go. Now, make sure there's a balance to that. If you're really not enjoying it, you don't think you've got a passion for it, then you should probably find something else, be that MMA or pro wrestling or rock climbing or CrossFit. Um, but if you're just not going you're not into a routine, plow through that routine uh, get into that routine, get into that pattern, and soon you'll find it's really easy as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. Don't keep going to the gym if you don't enjoy it. It's pointless. Why would you do that to yourself? We'll get to this later about motivation. But find something that motivates you. Find something that inspires you. Otherwise, it's a waste of life. There's loads of ways to get fit. You just don't, you don't have to go to the gym. Uh, Mr. Lomax in the comments says, Hi, Simon. Would you recommend a full body workout for someone who's just starting out? What do you th when do you think you should start splitting workouts? I think doing a full body workout three times a week when you first start training is fine. But I still think when it comes to that, you don't want to... Your body's... It depends how quickly you recover, right? I really do think you have to play it by ear. Because if you go to the gym on a Monday for the first time, you're going to kill for the entire week. Uh, and it, it does put a lot of people off, and I completely understand why. That's why I wouldn't necessarily do full body workouts numerous times a week just because I feel like if you do that on a Monday and then you feel like Wednesday you have to go back even though you're in loads of pain you may not go again this is just my opinion so I would go on a Monday I do an upper body workout then I go on Wednesday I do a lower body workout then on Friday or Saturday I do a whole body workout maybe Friday it gives yourself the weekend to recover or you can switch that round but that's what I do in terms of when you want to start splitting workouts I mean I did um uh, what would you call it? I did whole body workouts for a long time. I remember the day I changed. I was at a party and I went to a gym in Silso in Bedfordshire. So that must have been when I was about... So I probably did whole body workouts for about a, six months to a year. But then I was kind of making it up as I go. I remember I go do some session. I just did... I was 16. So what did I know? I just did abs. <laughs> so I won abs. So I did abs and I went home and ate Haribo and Coke. But I don't think there's anything wrong with starting off on the split workout as long as you know what you're doing, because that's eventually where you do want to go to allow your muscles to recover and stuff. Um, but no, if you want to do full body workout, try it. Just remember to listen to your body. That's the key with stuff like that. Again, I want to try and give you as accessible information as possible so you can apply it to you. So if you do a full body workout on a Monday, but you're still killing by the Wednesday, it would be better for you to have some, uh, some flexibility there to do legs or, or, or something else. So that's what I would do. When I was first starting out, I think upper, up, upper body day, lower body day, full body day, would have worked quite well. Uh, John Moraline, what is your best gym bro experience when somebody completely changed your perception? I know you're a positive guy, but that's my question. Oh, I've got so many gym bro stories. Like the, I mean, guy came up to me a few weeks ago and goes, why are you only deadlifting that much? <laughs> this is what I want to do. But you could deadlift more. But you don't know what I'm training for, bro. Maybe I'm training to lift this exact weight for seven reps. I hate anything like that. I just hate anything like that. Or people come up to you, the one I hate more than anything, and I've said this on a few videos, which please do subscribe and watch, is when people come up to you and go, so what do you take? Like, excuse me? Like, what roids do you take? I don't take any steroid. Oh, yeah, whatever. Right, so you're coming up and asking me an inappropriate question anyway. Then you're not believing my answer. What is the point? Other than that, it's just stupid, stupid things they say, like you shouldn't, 
you know, you, you shouldn't you, you shouldn't do bench press because it hurts your shoulders. Yeah, but not if it doesn't hurt your shoulders, you shouldn't. I have too many to name. I'll keep throwing them out as they pop into my brain, but there's loads. Uh, Smack chat. How do I lose uh, how do I lose love handles and excess belly fat? Been hitting the gym hard and getting good results. Just need a final push to tone right up. I mean, when you get to those last specific things, like uh, a, an area that men actually find difficult to lose fat in is their chest, which not a lot of people think about because if you've got some fat in your chest, it makes your chest look bigger. So that's pretty good. But uh, when you get to those last little bits and it is like losing, it's like trying to get rid of your love handles or, you know, that last bit of belly fat that we're talking about, you know, the, the sort of where your bottom abs would be, it really does come down to diet. Um, there's not really much you can do in the gym. I mean, if you're already hammering it hard and you're doing cardio and you're lifting weights, it's just about finding that balance between what you're eating without sacrificing muscles, if that's what you're trying to do. However, when you are going for that lean look, you are going to have to sacrifice some strength and sacrifice some muscles because bulk and fat will help you lift and it'll make your muscles look bigger. So I think it comes down to diet. I mean, if you really want to get super shredded, I would just keep slowly reducing your calories, not by a lot, just do it week by week. Remember, anything with the gym is a process and takes time. But I, w I literally would drop it by, I mean, it depends how, if you really don't give a crap about your, uh, I'd say, I don't know what your situation is, but I don't, if you really don't give a crap about size, and you just want that shredded look, just chuck 100 calories away a week and keep knocking off 100 calories a week until you see it going. And it will go as long as you're burning off the excess as well. So there is no real workout I think when it comes down to those little things, it is all about diet. So take your time, take it easy, slowly reduce your calories, reduce your food intake, and uh, you may find something that works for you. Maybe it's just a question of adding in another cardio session. You can keep your diet where it's the same, but I've always found those last annoying bits is when I have to tap into my diet and figure it out. Uh, Joel Brown, hi Simon, big fan of yours. That's very kind, Joel, thank you. My question is, with the fasting cardio, how long do you do it for? Again, how long is a piece of string? Completely up to you. I do 45 minutes just because it just works for me. You could do 20, you could do 30, you could do an hour. You know, because I don't want to, I'm mostly doing fasted cardio now for my wrestling, just to make sure I keep in shape. I certainly don't want to, I'm not trying to shred up or I certainly don't want to lose any muscle at the moment. 45 minutes to me, to me just works. But 45 minutes is a long time fasted cardio, especially if you've got work and life and all this kind of stuff. Just start with 20 minutes. Start with 10 minutes. Start with, te do 10 minutes three times a week. See how you get on with that. Next week, go up to 12 minutes. And then before long, in six weeks, you'll be up to a number that you're happy with and it won't feel awful. If you go into a gym tomorrow and I go do 45 minutes, you'll be like, stay in bed. Bed's more fun than fasted cardio. But again, it, it incremental small baby steps. And before you know it, you would have worked up to 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, and it won't feel as bad. Uh, Brother Barry, semi or whole milk? <laughs> that kind of ties into diet, which we'll talk about now. Now, everybody's calorific intake is going to be different. What I need to take to bulk up is going to be different from what you need to take and vice versa with leaning up. So, I mean, if you have never heard of if you fit your, mac if you fit your macros, it literally means you find out your macros, how much carbs, fats, proteins, whatever, calories you can take in a day. And if you want to just have a pizza that fits all those macros, you can do it and your body's pretty much going to look the same. I mean, that's the idea and it does work to a certain degree. So if you want to have whole milk and that fits into the amount of calories you're having a day, have whole milk. But it's not, there isn't, it's not like if you drink semi-milk, you're going to lose weight or if you have whole milk, you're going to get fat. It's again about finding the balance between what you're currently eating and how you're currently training. But if you want whole milk and you're not training for a bodybuilder competition or you're not a model or you've not got a sporting competition, have whole milk. Don't punish yourself. I hate all these videos. Or I hate Instagram posts. Here we go. This is my gym bro question. I hate, I hate Instagram posts. It's like, oh, it's such a struggle. It's such a grind. I mean, it can be a grind, of course. Of course, when I was doing up to my bodybuilding contest, oh my gosh, it was hell. However, people are choosing to put themselves in that state. That's different. That's like a, a completely different mental state entirely. If you're just going to the gym to have fun, don't punish yourself. There's no point. We'll be dead in 50 years. Like <laughs> You should enjoy it. So if you want whole milk on your cereal, have whole milk on your cereal, but just make sure the calories and the food you're having the rest of your day match that if you have a certain goal in mind. It's really, I mean, whole milk does have more calories and more fat in it, I think, probably, and more carbs. But I don't think it's going to make a huge difference depending on what on what you want to do. Uh, Kieran Tuhi, it's not how I pronounce your name. I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, I do one or two full body weight sessions a week. Five exercises, usually pull down, seated row, bench press, overhead press, and deadlift. Goal is being decent shape for sports, not build huge mass. Thoughts? Sounds good to me. I mean, if it's working for you, yeah. So you're doing two full body weight sessions a week, five... 
yeah, you've got you got your uh, look. If you're just building to get in decent shape, that sounds great to me. You're exercising, you're pushing your body. If that works for you, fantastic, man. Keep it up. Uh, hey, to H, do you have any tips for gaining weight? Well, look, here's what I did. I was a very hard gainer when I first started lifting weights when I was 16 years old. So when I was 17 or 18, I think it was 18, I just said, I'm going to eat everything. And I literally ate everything. The story I always tell to my mates is the time I was in uh, upper, I was in sixth form. So it's the same school I was at for middle school, whatever. And I knew the canteen ladies and they knew what I was doing. And they once came up to me and said, Simon, we've got about 40 fish fingers left. Do you want them? And I said, yes. And I ate every single one. I don't have a picture to hand, but I got really fat. <laughs> but intentionally so, while training, while doing big lifts, like my deadlift, my bench, my squat. And then, because I knew at the end of this process, what I was going to do is I was going to lean up. I was going to be very strict. And it, I don't say it worked. I didn't do it, I didn't lean up and then look like, oh, amazing. I still don't think that now. But, you know, but it worked in the sense that I put on mass. Now, that may not work for you, but I knew that I'd do that. I think a lot of people may do that just to stay fat. She's like, I can't be asked. But in terms of gaining weight, if you just want to gain weight because you felt you're too small, it's just eat. I know that's a terrible thing to say. It's like, well, obviously, but that is the case. And unfortunately, yeah, I'll be honest with you. When I went on that first Super Bowl, as I call it, I ate through the pain. And it was uncomfortable. And it was horrible. And I felt sick. And this sounds ridiculous, right? And it kind of contradicts a lot of what I've been saying. But I was a hard gainer. And I knew how much calories and how much food I had to take in to get over that hump. So I just thought, screw it. That's what I'm going to do. So that's what so that's what I did. However, if you just want to gain weight, eat pizza all day. <laughs> so you'll have a great time. I'd love that. Uh, Steve Bailey, at one point during a press-up, is it best to flare my buttocks? Always flare your buttocks. Never stop flaring your buttocks. Uh, G1 at... I can't even read that. What are the best supplements for weight loss? Now, this... Supplements are an interesting... To me, a supplement is a... Vanity, vanity drug is the wrong word. That's not what I'm looking for. There is no supplement out there, legal, that you can take that is going to sort of, you know, magically help you lose weight. However, there are certain things that I would advise that you do take in order to be fit, healthy, and put your body in a position to lose weight. So I would take a vitamin. I would take vitamin C. I would take omega fats. That will help you lose weight. Omega threes. But outside of that, I mean, you can take fat burners which kind of just give you a big shot of caffeine. That is going to help, but they're also horrible to take. They're going to make you feel awful. I wouldn't over rely on, on supplements, I think, is my thing. There is no magic supplement out there. And believe you me, I've looked. So I just think the, be the, the best supplement for, for, for weight loss is cardio <laughs> and is exercise. It doesn't have to be cardio, obviously, as, we, as we've chatted about. But that, that truly is it. There's nothing I can tell you now that is going to you know, all of a sudden you wake up tomorrow and you, and you drop 10 pounds. It just doesn't exist unless it's illegal and you certainly shouldn't be taking it. Uh, Critter Rion, it's not right. How do you properly start? I get that question a lot. and We kind of answered it earlier, but that was more specific to the gym. I honestly think the best way to start any kind of exercise program is to find something you like and you do it. Because if you like something, you're going to be empowered to learn more about it, research it, go on Google, talk to people, come on stuff like this. So, uh, you know, it's... it's um, I mean, that's, that's really, I'm really a cop-out answer, but you find out what you like to do. Decide what your goals are. And your goal can just be, I want to get in shape. That is fine. It doesn't have to be, I want to put on six pounds before December. And then figure out what you think you're going to enjoy. So if you're more of a sort of a, a, a rough and tumble kind of a guy, maybe go to MMA class or, 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 do, something, or, do, or do something like that. But I mean, do do some research. I mean, maybe watch stuff like this and, go and read some other videos just so you've got a bit of an idea so you can kind of shape it. But the best thing to do when you first start is just to go. And then you'll start figuring out. And of course, you're going to have bad experiences. I've had times in gyms where I just wanted the world to swallow me and die, be that because I put too much weight on the bar or I did something wrong or a gym bro came and upset me. You get past all that. People are idiots. You're always going to get idiots. Uh, redneck pill neck. <laughs> No, wait, wait, red pill, redneck. <laughs> what advice do you have, pe have for people with sugar addictions, more specifically soda? It's like giving up smoking, right? You just got to, I mean, the one thing I would advocate above anything, see people say, how do I lose weight? Cut out fizzy drinks. I cannot, you can keep your diet exactly like it is now. Cut out fizzy drinks and you'll probably lose weight. I'm, I'm, it, that sounds like I'm making it up, but it really is true. Fizzy drinks are, I'm not going to say they're terrible for you because they're lovely, right? So they're not terrible for you. You get enjoyment out of them. But in terms of weight loss, they are terrible for you. 
you just have to maybe find an alternative. Maybe you can have, a, 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 don't have too many zero drinks either. Cause it's diff- but, you know, switch to zero drinks or switch to a squash, which still has sugar in it, but, the, you know, you can, can control the, the concentration then. Uh, but, yeah, fizzy drinks really are going to screw up any kind of fitness program. They are honestly awful for you in terms of health. I don't like saying anything's bad for you because Fanta, man, I mean, like, that, that's a day out for me. Drink a Fanta, a lemon Fanta, my gosh. It's like, that's a party. Someone got me a lemon Fanta for my birthday. I'd be over the moon. Um, but that is, I mean, that is just, they're not great. So if you are addicted to them, you can always break an addiction. That's a mental thing. I mean, to a certain point, there's a physical addiction there as well. But it's the mental game that people find the hardest. You've just got to find a replacement and put yourself in a position where you can, you know, you can, you can move on from that. <laughs> Mankind223 with the best question yet. How do I tell if I'm activating my glutes? It never feels like I'm using them when I'm exercising. It's a good question. I always used to think that, <clears throat> excuse me, I used to think that, and my ass is massive now. It's the only only part of my body that, I, I, everything else I have no idea, I've probably got body dysmorphia, but my ass I look at and go, fucking hell, Millie, you got to get rid of that ass. Look, if you're squatting, you're going to be working your glutes. If you're doing deadlifts, you'll be working your glutes. You can do it, you can do glute ham raises. Um, I won't go into them here, you can just look them up on the internet. I'll do a video on them soon, but there's no point me trying to explain how to do a glute ham raise, but you can do that. You will be, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you will be. Uh, Tanner Stotoshruck. I can't pronounce these names. I'm trying to lose weight. I have modified my diet and it's going all right. All right. How much cardio should I do during my workout? Right now, I do about four miles per workout daily. Much love from Canada. That's amazing. From Canada, brilliant. Thank you, Tanner. To be honest, man, if you, four miles a day is a lot, well, it's not a lot. It's, it's working for you right now, so it's fantastic. I mean. You're trying to lose weight, right? So again, I think in this case, you're already doing the exercise. So you're already over that hurdle. Keep an eye on the mirror and keep an eye on the scales. That's the best thing to um, decide whether you need to do more. So let's say you're 12 stone and you keep doing your four miles for the next three, four weeks. So you've got to give it time your body to catch up. Don't like do it for three days and go, oh no. Give it, give it, three, give it a month or so. And if you look in the mirror, and mirror is more important than weight in my world. But if you do look in the mirror, you don't really see much and the scales are kind of backing that up, then yeah, increase it is what I would say. Um, and from there, you can kind of tweak to, to what you want to do. But four miles a day is pretty good, man. So it doesn't sound like you're beating yourself up at all, but it's good. It's a great start. Now it's just about making sure it works for you. But four miles a day is good. That, that's really good. Uh, Cam Robinson. Oh, my man. My favorite person. Can you build muscle and burn fat at the same time? Yes, if you're a genetic freak. <laughs> Something I was desperate to do for years was build muscle and burn fat. I, you know, you, well, you can do it. You can actually. Most people can do it. But the problem is, if you want to build... Look, when you first start at the gym, you probably are going to build muscle and burn fat, right? Because you're going to shock your body to such an extent that it's going to be like, holy... You know, and, and you will do that, but eventually you'll plateau off and you'll and you'll balance out. And that to me is really where you need to make a decision because it's about focus, right? And it's about deciding what you want to do. So if you're constantly trying to build fat, but also uh, build muscle, but also burn fat, you you got these two counts. It's like magnets when you try and push them together. He says, whacking his bike. But it's like two magnets going against each other. You're not going to be able to gain the muscle you want because you're not focusing on that, and you're not going to be able to lose the muscle. Uh, lose the fat that you want because you're not focusing on that. And that's, again, just from my, my personal uh, vantage point, that's where you really have to make a choice and understand that there's certain cons that come with both. The con of building muscle, if you're a lean guy, is that you are going to put on fat, just have to accept that. However, your muscles are going to get bigger and you are going to get stronger. And if you're going to burn fat, yes, eventually you're going to start getting weaker and your muscles won't be as big, but you're going to be lean. And sometimes when you're lean, you look bigger than when you don't. So that's the only reason I would advocate not doing it, just because I don't think you can put on the muscle you want if you're also trying to burn fat and vice versa. But it can be done, especially when you first start out at the gym. So if you are seeing that, keep doing what you're doing until you feel like you hit that plateau, then pick one. What's more important to you? You want to be a big dude, you want to be a muscly dude, or you want to be a, a, a lean dude? And again, then you cycle it. You go on bulks and cuts and bulks and cuts, and then 17 years has gone by, and you realize you dedicated your life to this. <laughs> My other man, Ben Potter, how do I stop eating chips? I can't stop thinking about chips. What should I have for dinner? Chips? What time is it? Chips? Hey, man, I'd say you should eat chips all the time. You found something you love. His real question is, though, I eat relatively healthily, but I constantly fantasize about unhealthy food. How do you deal with your cravings? 
it's the most boring answer ever. I have a cheat meal every Saturday and my cheat meals are enough to make people cry, I imagine. But then when I do have a, I, I see, I, again, you really do. It's like anything. If you cut out sugar, eventually your body stops craving sugar because it does forget. It's all about what your body remembers. And you're going to go through some bad times. So it's a question of getting through those bad times and just drinking loads of water. Or you could take an appet appetite suppressant if you want. I don't like them, but it's up to you. But yeah, the key really is about getting through that bad time and eventually you will just come, you, your body just adapt and you won't crave things anymore. These days I don't crave. I don't crave because I don't eat badly in the week and then the weekend comes and I destroy myself with food. I mean, I really do. Everyone, everyone always goes, oh, you can't eat that much. And then they come for my cheat meal with me. And they're like, oh my gosh. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that I'm cool or that's an achievement. I'm just saying that's how I get through the week. I know on Saturday night, I'm going to wreck myself and feel wonderful and cry tears of joy and grease from the fat. Uh, but if you are having really bad cravings, just find things to, you know, to, 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 to take the place of what you are craving. So chips are lovely. Chips aren't really, I can't think of an alternative for chips. But say you love desserts, right? You can get 10 calorie jelly. And when you first start eating the 10 calorie jelly, you're like, this tastes disgusting. But eventually you'll forget what actual jelly tastes like. And then jelly's going to be lovely. So, you know, find alternatives that still taste nice. So, uh, I mean, there's loads of different things. Don't worry, while we're here as well, don't worry about this nonsense with the GI scale. You may have heard something like, oh, don't have high GI foods. Don't have white bread. You should have brown bread. I don't agree with that. Unless you're literally eating white bread out of the packet, if you're having it with anything else, that is still going to slow your digestion system down. So yes, if you eat one slice of white bread compared to one slice of brown bread, the brown bread is going to be digested quicker, uh, longer. However, if you have a white piece of bread with chicken on it, chicken sandwich, right? That chicken also has to be digested so it will slow your digestive system down. So if you want to have, I mean, again, it's all about moderation to figure out what wants for you. But if you think having white bread instead of brown bread is going to stop you necking a pizza in the week, have the white bread. As long as you're having it with something else, your digestion system can handle it. And if you, some people are sensitive, right? I can't eat pasta. If I have pasta, even if I sort of match it calorie for calorie with something else, I just get really fat. But you'll learn that and then you can adjust, uh, you can adjust to suit. Um, I'm just checking the questions. Adam Grice, hey Simon, one of my arms is a bit bigger than the other. Is this normal with me or is it just, is this a problem with me? It's just normal. Dude, it's normal. I bet you're right-handed or something. I mean, that ties into bodybuilding competitions, right? Because one of the things they judge you on is symmetry. I mean, you can, you can even it out. So let's say your left arm is bigger than your right arm. Even if you're just doing uh, dumbbell curls, just do a 12 in your left and a 10 in your right. Or just do more on, on the smaller arm. And your body will compensate. But no, it's perfectly normal. I think... Um, my left side is a lot weaker. I think that was one of the things I, I fell down on. I mean, symmetry was quite good in my competition, but yeah, no, don't. That, that's just something you can actually balance out in the gym with time. That's cool to have stuff like that, actually. It gives you a really good goal to focus on. So yeah, just, just, just do, a little, do a little bit more of that. Uh, Reese Appleton, how do you stay motivated and keep yourself going? Reese, sorry. Right, the motivation question is the hardest thing in the world. I think it's probably the most important question in the world because if you love something and you're passionate about it, you're going to go do it, right? That's why I'm the luckiest man in the world when it comes to fitness. I went into a gym when I was 16 years old. I did a bicep curl. It's the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. Genuinely, I did it and I went, that's it, I'm hooked. And I knew that because here I am 17 years later and I'm still doing it. So I'm very lucky, right? I love going to the gym. I get to go to the gym five times a week. I'm going today, I'm excited. I mean, how lucky am I, right? I'm excited to go to the gym. I found something I love that much and it just happens to tie into fitness and all that kind of stuff. So you need to find what motivates you, which is why I don't advocate, I keep knocking my table. I'm gonna back off a bit so I start wiggling the camera. Uh, you need to find what motivates you, which is why I don't advocate just going to the gym and nothing else. I think you, again, you need to find your, need to find your passion. And, and there's so much as well, because people forget you know, all kind of exercise is going to work. Again, rock climbing, I always advocate because so many people go rock climbing and they love it and you're working your forearm, you're working your latch, you're working your shoulders, you're going to work your legs. MMA will do that for you. Pro wrestling will do that for you. CrossFit will do that for you if you want a more kind of bizarre form of bodybuilding for lack of a better term. You just have to find what works for you because if you, if you, start, if you start falling in love with it and you start seeing results and you feel like you're good at this, you're going to go. And it's as simple as that. There's no point me telling you, oh, if you keep going for six years, all of a sudden you'll start to love it. You know deep down if you love it or not. If you don't love it, stop going to the gym and find something else. There will be something out there. Trampolining. Um, gymnastics. 
There's loads of stuff. And what usually happens is, say rugby is the thing you fall in love with, right? Then you're going to want to go to the gym because you think, if I get a bit bigger, I'll be better at rugby. And I love rugby. Then all of a sudden you've got a goal and mentally you love the gym. Simple as that. But it's hard to find it. So that's what motivation is all about. It's, there's, there's no secret to it. There's no point in me pretending, oh, if you, you, know, if you hammer on home, it's, it's not true. And I don't like it when people say that. You get, you get all these Instagram posts again saying, push through to the others. No, no, it's lies. <laughs> It's lies. If I kept punching you in the face, you're not going to go, I like it now. You may get used to it, but you're not going to like it. So, yeah, follow your, follow your heart is what I would say for that. My man, Adam Pearson, what's the best way to get started if you want to get into fitness and training? Is it better to prioritize diet, exercise, or balance both? I think when you first start, you can forget about diet entirely, right? Because everyone's got a diet. You know what you mostly eat in a day. If you're then adding exercise on top of that, you're going to lose weight because you're now burning more calories than you were. So at first, I'd always prioritize training. Diet is arguably more important in the long run, but I'd prioritize working out or training or exercise first with whatever diet you want. That way, you're not going all in and sacrificing stuff, and you are going to see results because you're now you know, burning more calories or, or, or training your muscles more than you were. However, yeah, eventually, you are going to want a balance of both. Everyone hits plateaus. Everyone's going to hit where their natural ceiling is. And that's when you do need to start tweaking the fuel, basically. I treat food as fuel, which is a terrible thing to say because food is the most wonderful thing in the world. But that's what you need to do. You need to understand what I need to put in me so that when I go to the gym later, I can smash it better than I did last week. Because don't forget, going to the gym or any kind of thing like that is a competition with yourself before it's a competition with anybody else. You want to better the stats that you did seven days prior or whatever. But yeah, so when you first get started, just go, just go train. Don't worry about your diet. Don't then go eat crap either. <laughs> Don't go eat more crap because you're going for the gym, which is that little Britain joke. You know, we're, ha we're having half the cake so we can have double. But yeah, I definitely would prioritize uh, uh, fitness first. Uh, Dan Banner, how can I target the waste and lose weight from there? Mostly, unfortunately, you can't. You just have to, like I say, burn more calories than you're taking in and then see what your body does. It sucks. Uh, as I found out when I got super lean for my competition, I struggled to lose weight from my chest and the bottom bit, that sort of bottom bit, the waist. Some people don't. It's, it's the genetics. I know it's a horrible thing. That's not what you want to hear. But <laughs> that is true. David Ayers, would you recommend a Fitbit? Yeah, they're okay. They're good if you want to crack that. They're good. I, it depends how you want to track that stuff. But sure, they teach you how many calories you've lost, steps you've done. Yeah, absolutely. If you've got the, the, the disposable income for that, sure. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Tanks Fridge, what would you recommend for someone with a heart condition? I have an enlarged heart and want to remain in shape without exhausting myself. I've lost about two stone, but want to remain fit and relatively in shape, which will hopefully help with my heart. Well, that's more of a medical question, so I wouldn't want to give too much information. But dude, if you lost two stone, it sounds like you're doing great. Um, and it is going to help your heart, of course. But I guess with something when it comes to your heart, it's just about keeping everything in moderation. I mean, I, I don't know what your condition is but I don't think you could push yourself too hard in the gym within the realms of what you're capable of and hurt your heart. Like Heavy lifting shouldn't hurt your heart. But again, I don't know what your condition is. So I, I wouldn't want to make a comment on that. But what I will say is that's very inspiring and awesome and good for you. If you've lost two stone, I'd say you're pretty much doing it right. If you're feeling healthy, keep doing that. You don't need me, man. You're smashing it. Uh, Dave Jewett, another man. Can you make cardio suck any less? No, David, I can't. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately cardio is just rubbish uh you can read a book i don't mind people doing that uh, i think i don't like it when in in the gym but if you're on a treadmill or, or a cardio machine which is kind of you know you can't get anybody's way read a book play a game listen to a podcast just, the what my my advice and my or i always say to everyone about cardio is get it done that's it just get it done you may love it which you're lucky but it's the worst thing ever also what tips do you have for recovery and minimizing post-workout aches Eating does help because obviously the whole point there is you're trying to recover, right? And again, it, it, there is genetics to a certain degree. Everyone can recover. Like I recover now quicker than I ever have done. Why is that? I'm an old man. I mean, I've got aches and pains in my joints, but in terms of my muscles recovering, but that's also a case of, you know, there is this stigma that if you go to the gym, you have to nail it. We've got to be real men and women and we've got to wake up with doms. It's not actually true. Depending on what your, your split is for the week, you don't have to hit failure. You just have to figure out where you need to be to ensure that you trigger that muscle and break it down. That doesn't mean DOMS. DOMS are a great way of telling you that. But yeah, DOMS, if you get super DOMS, it's going to take, uh, DOMS is delayed onset muscle soreness for people that don't know. So just when your muscle hurts after you work it. So maybe if you want to recover quicker and you maybe you want to do a couple of back sessions a week, 
just knock it off a bit and you may actually see better gains. Like I saw much better progress when I stopped doing one back session a week. I did two, which you're not supposed to do, but I tried it with help with a trainer. And we stopped going to failure and I made gains. Uh, but in terms of it, there are other stuff you can do. Get loads of sleep, which I know is hard. I don't sleep well at all. Bags. Get loads of sleep. Glutamine is quite good or amino acids in general will help you recover. It's not a miracle drug, but it will help. Uh, and eat. If you ate loads of food, like seriously, say you went to the gym on a Saturday, you went home and had a cheat meal, and you had an epic cheat meal, on Sunday you would have recovered more. Obviously, that doesn't work necessarily when you're trying to keep fit too. But yeah, food, sleep, amino acids, that's, that would be my three. Uh, uh, that would be my three. Hader H, again, when trying to gain weight, how much cardio should I do, if any? If your goal is to gain weight, cut out the cardio. Cut it out. You can deal with any unnecessary weight down the line. Focus on gaining weight. Uh, uh, go forward with that. Random reviews. Nice t-shirt, man. Yeah, I love Samsung Athletics. They do good t-shirts. And not even sponsor. I wanted, I, I, they should sponsor me. Everyone go tell Samsung Athletics to sponsor me. <laughs> um, Neil Harris. What exercises can I do when I'm working away and can't get to the gym to keep the muscles looking good? Keep, bodyweight exercises are the best. So you can do press-ups. You can, I know that sounds silly, but it's true. If you're away, you just want to activate the muscle, right? So you can do press-ups, you can do sit-ups, you can do leg raises, you get a couple of chairs and do dips. If you're in a solid room, you can do some pull-ups. Don't pull anything down, but that's fine. All the classic body exercises, you know, you can do Hindu squats or normal squats, you know, body weight squats. Loads of things you can do. And look around, say you're in a hotel, there may be stuff you can hold to add weight. You could always have a good workout. Not necessarily as good as you would in the gym, but I would just do stuff like that. You know, um, yeah, you, you know, I'm trying to think if there's any more. I mean, burpees are good. Anything like that. And you're getting cardio then as well. Uh, Lewis Leon, what do you think of fasting to get lean? If you mean like intermittent fasting, again, I think you need to see if it works for you. I'm not going to get into intermittent fasting here because I'm going to do a video on that soon about diets in general, but we'll get to that. But again, I tried it. Didn't work for me. Didn't work for my lifestyle. Uh, Ross Bally, is it worth getting a personal trainer? I can't comment on that because I didn't have a personal trainer for 16 years of me training. However, I would say in the last year, me having a personal trainer has helped loads, but I'd also maybe potentially argue that's because I'd massively hit a plateau without realizing it because I've been training for so long. So I would say have a plan to get a personal trainer, but at first I think you'll be okay without one, uh, would be my guess. Dave Aaron, what's the best way to solve lower back problems? Yoga's good, stretching is good. I mean, that's kind of the same with all that stuff. If you do a good stretching routine before and after, and don't get me wrong, that's, that's more boring than cardio. If you do do stuff like that or do do yoga, it just supples the joints. Like I basically have no cartilage left in my knee. However, if I do, um, if I do warm up before or after and get some yoga in, I feel pretty good. So that, unfortunately, is just a case of managing the situation as best you can. If you have lower back problems, maybe stay away from deadlifts for the time being. Let that recover. And then when you do go back to deadlifts, slowly, slowly build them back up. And just make sure you work on form too. A lot of people actually have bad backs because their form's not very good. And that means you do need to throw the weight off and focus... Um, Focus on that. King Awesome, did you change something in the weight training when you started with wrestling training? No, I just up my cardio because I knew that would be what I needed to do. But um, to me, your training is either working for you or it's not working for you. And you can, you know, even with wrestling, I just need a better cardio. So I added in cardio. So I kept it quite simple. Uh, Maddie, I'm not very fit and downright awful when it comes to sports. I really want to change it around. Any tips on how to keep me motivated? Well, you can't touch on motivation. But yeah, again, find what works for you find what you love that really is the answer there's no point in me pretending there's a secret here because there's not and cause the thing that annoys me the most on the internet is uh people pretend there is there isn't i go to the gym because i love it would i go if i didn't love it probably not it's as simple as that so you find what you do if you're doing some sports or you know make sure if you want to go to the gym and you love again rugby or whatever tie in the gym to that sport and y you'll enjoy it more papa beard k <laughs> least favorite exercise at the gym lunges I hate them. I hate them doubly because they're really good uh, for legs. I hate them. 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 <laughs> I hate lunges. Neil Kilpatrick, what's your routine? Is sticking to the big five lifts a good option for a beginner? Thanks, Simon. Love the channel. Thank you, Neil. Absolutely. I would actually say if you are starting out at the gym, you want to be a big strong guy, the big five lifts. And I presume everyone's got a different opinion these days for the big five lifts. But I presume you're going squat, deadlift, uh, bench, uh, shoulder press. What would the fifth one be? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, compound movements, you can get, you can get a whole workout of compound movements if you're doing them right. You know, deadlifts, everything I just said. 
Uh, my routine, I don't want to go into it specifically here because I'll do a separate video on that. But my routine at the moment is a five-day split. Day one is an upper power day. Day two is a leg day. And then day three, is, these aren't concurrent, but day three is chest and triceps. Day four is back and biceps. Day five is shoulders. But it doesn't really quite work like that because I am doing back and shoulder stuff on day one and, and all that kind of stuff. But we'll get into that. Uh, before that, I was doing an upper power day, a lower power day, an, hyper, an upper hypertrophy day, and a lower hypertrophy day. So mixing it up is key, but we'll get into that more in a in, in a different video. Uh, Mankind223, do you have a specific stretching routine depending on what area you're training? Yes, but I always make sure that I kind of try and warm up everything. But if I'm doing legs, I'll focus more on that. If, I, if I'm doing... I have to warm up my shoulders a lot because I have a dodgy shoulder. Uh, so that, you know, that requires... A, I know it sucks, but I really would advise doing it. Even if you don't hurt now, I hurt all the time. If only I, if only I had done that. Uh, John Denton, my other my other main man. Best body weight exercise for strength for people who can't get to the gym or are intimidated. We kind of touched on that with the guy that went away. Um, but I really do think, if, especially if you're not working out and you don't want to go to the gym, if you start doing, we'll say 50 press-ups. If you start doing 50 press-ups a day, 50 sit-ups a day, 50 dips a day, uh, 50 pull-ups a day, get a bar or something, you are going to see results. You really will. It takes time. I think that's the problem. A lot of people don't see results in a few weeks and and that's it. They give in. So don't give in. <laughs> That's my advice for you, is don't give in. But you, you know what the basic exercises are. Um, I, I, I would do those. That's what I would suggest. Um, Eternity7 says, where do you find the motivation to be consistent with nutrition and exercise? We haven't mentioned the nutrition bit. I like eating healthy. Also, I eat a lot of food. I get to eat six to seven times a day, even though I am still hungry, even though I'm always hungry. But you know, I, I, every two hours I'm eating. So it's not really hard to... Do you know what I mean? And I work between those two hours, so it's not like I'm ever wanting for food. <laughs> Maybe that's a good idea as well. Don't want for food. If you're hungry, eat. Just make sure you eat something healthy. I think that's a good way to stop cravings as well. Uh, a couple in the comments. Uh, oh, Oz, Ozreal. Is there any way to get cut while sitting on my rear playing video games all day? Starve yourself? But don't do that. No, there's not. Not realistically, anyway. Almost Andy. I'm currently dealing with a pretty bad pull trap, so I can't do most of my upper body. How do you cope with being out of action with injury when you used to go into the gym most days? I don't, Andy. I'm a mess. <laughs> I couldn't go to the gym recently because I hurt my back and I wanted to kill myself. Um, always rest up. Don't. A lot of people say, oh, I've got a bad shoulder. I'm going to work legs. I would just rest. What You're just going to risk injuring yourself. Even if you're doing legs properly, your shoulders are still you know, coming into play a little bit. Just rest. It sucks. It sucks. I hate being injured. I hate it. But again, that's why I advocate warming up and all that kind of stuff so you don't do that. Uh, Spooky John, eating health or working out, which is more important? They're equally as important as each other. I'm sorry to tell you that, John. I, I know I used to think if only you know, one was the way, but not, you need both. I started making the most progress when I was eating, found what worked for me eating-wise and found what worked for me training-wise. And they, they work in tandem with each other because like, as we said, one is fueling the other. I know nobody wants to hear that. Zach, how do I gain muscle mass? Take a shitload of steroids. No, I'm joking. Um, up your protein, not too much because it will convert to fat. Up your protein, up your carbs, up your fats. Train really hard, train really strong. That's it, simple. It's going to take time. You're going to put on some fat. Make sure you have the dedication to balance that out the other end. Bob's your uncle. Uh, Nick Hill Chowdhury. As a beginner, should I focus on form or weight? Always form. And forget that be beginner question. Should I focus on form or weight? Full stop. Always form. Always form. Because what, because strength will come with the form, right? When I see people bicep curling like this, oh my gosh, lock those elbows. Start with a five. Do a five. And th don't, don't feel you need to go to five to 20. Do five week one. Week two, do five again. Week three, do 5.25. Week four, do 5.5. Week whatever that would be next, do 5.75. Get to six. Take your time with it. Make sure you're working those muscles. Make sure you're squeezing at the top because otherwise you're not doing anything anyway. Strength means nothing. Strength is great and strength is cool, especially if you're a powerlifter. But again, look at powerlifters. Their form is awesome because they've built up to that. So form is everything. Absolutely, there is nothing more important than form in the gym, in my opinion. Uh, Turbo Hads, creatine, post or pre-workout. I actually take mine during workout. I don't think it matters. I don't think it makes much difference. I take it during with, I have an intra workout shake that has carbs and amino acids in it. I mean, you can argue pre because you're then priming your body to take it in. You can argue post because you've broken the muscle down, so you will be feeding it whenever you want, whatever works for you. 
Uh, Dan Banner, are you going to bring out your own apparel? <laughs> no, I tried that with Miller t-shirts. Though no, a few people bought them actually. Maybe who knows? Um, what is your opinion? The best way to put on muscle fast? There isn't one. You're either going to put on muscle fast because you're built that way, or you're going to have to. I didn't put on any muscle really for five years. That's the truth of it. You could tell I lifted weights, but not to where I wanted to be. It took a long time. Um, I think actually, if you wanted to put on muscle fast, what I'd actually suggest you is getting really lean. If you get super lean and you've got a bit of muscle on you, you will look bigger. So I'd actually suggest going that way. Odors plays. Here, Miller, how do I stop being weak at the gym? Literally use what I just said. Say we're doing deadlifts, right? Say you can't get past 30 kilogram deadlifts. Add on 2.5 in your next session. After that, add another 2.5. Baby steps, take your time. Accept that it's going to take a few weeks, a few months. And you'll get there. I promise you, you'll get there. It just takes time. And make sure you're eating as well. Make sure you're getting that food in there so you can grow. Uh, David Wallet, my other man, your thoughts on energy-based supplements like Grenade? Tried once, uh, tried some a while, a year ago, knocked them back with a black coffee. A huge, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised you had a huge anxiety attack. Do not take shit like pre-workout with a coffee. Fuck, I swore. Like there is so much caffeine. Right, here's my take on pre-workouts. I don't like I don't like stimulant-based pre-workouts because what no one ever tells you is some people like myself. If you get stimulated, right, there has to be a, 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 a what's the word I'm looking for? An opposite to that. It's not the right word, but there has to be a fallout. You can't be stimulated without becoming unstimulated. Some people can deal with it. I can't. When I used to take pre-workout, stimulated pre-workout, I would get back after the gym and I'd be like. Why am I so depressed? And it's because I was so stimulated that when you come down to the other side, you feel awful. And it's because there's so much caffeine in those things. So please, for the love of everything, do not take those things <laughs> with coffee because you will have an anxiety attack. Your, your heart rate's going to be through the roof. Um, but if you do, I mean, try it. Whatever it says is the recommended dose, half it. That's the first thing I'm going to say to you. Secondly, try a non-stimulant one. I don't, and this thing, I'm not sponsored by anyone, I promise. I, I take Nitro OX by Anabolic Designs. It's the best pre workout I've ever taken. No stimulants. It's expensive. I love the gym. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think pre workout is essential. I think a coffee is as good as a pre workout with stimulants if that's what you want to do. And it is great pre workout. You're going to look big, pumped, your veins are going to stick out, and you're going to feel awesome. But I just don't think it's worth it on the other side. You don't want to come back from the gym and feel like rubbish. Uh, Drew Scher, any advice on alleviating doms? First week back off a month long break and they've hit me big time. My legs are killing me. Just rest up, eat your food. Like take the amino acids like we mentioned earlier. Just rest. The best, because you want your muscles to recover, right? How do you recover? When you're tired, what do you do? You sleep. Exactly the same thing. Your body needs fuel. Your body needs to grow. They need, they need the, the nutrients. So make sure you make sure you get um, uh, your food in there. Uh, last question that we asked out earlier. Tim says, what is too long a break between sets? Well, I'll tell you what is too long a break between sets. If you sat there on your phone for five minutes, <laughs> I'm kidding. There is no, it depends. Let's say you're a power, again, you keep going, oh, Miller's answers aren't very specific, but it's, that's what I'm trying to do. If you're a power lifter, take five minutes. Because if you're lifting like 300 kilogram deadlifts, yeah, take your time. Because mostly you're going to be going for one reps anyway, so you want to feel as fresh as you can. If you're looking for pump training, and at the moment, you just want to get that pump and that blood to your muscles. Don't have to look then. <laughs> and you want to get that blood to your muscles. High reps. That's what you're going to do if you want to find some. Uh, so, so when you're doing high reps, sorry, do them quick. You know, 30, 40 seconds. I, I, liked, I like to, uh, so let's go, we'll go to my workout later today. My workout later today, I'll start with incline bench. I'll probably take one to two minutes rest there because I'm going up to one big lift. And I want to make sure I recover after my warm-up sets. Everything after that is pump and blood circulation training. I w a minute will be my max between all my, all my sets. Because the whole point is I'm trying to get blood to that muscle. Stop. Let, let it die down a bit. Do it again. You don't want it to die down too much. Otherwise, you're going to lose all that uh, sort of blood flow. And then you won't be working the muscle as much. So decide what your goals are, decide what you're trying to do, and decide how you feel. If your body thinks, oh, I can do another set, go for it. If you still feel a bit fatigued, maybe give it 30 more seconds. And also, there's nothing wrong with being on your phone. Just be respectful to other people in the gym. Uh, right, last two. Odus plays. I've been going to the gym regularly for a few months now, and I'm steadily gaining muscle and losing weight, but I'd like to trim down my fat a bit more. Do I just focus on diet? Yeah, if you've got that balance there, and you're getting a bit fat, quote-unquote, it'll be because you're taking in too many calories. Not too many. That's the wrong. That's the wrong turn of phrase. You're just taking in more calories than you potentially need for your goals. So yes, I would keep doing what you're doing. Knock out 50 calories, 100 calories. See how you get on with that. Give it a couple of weeks. Knock out some more. Should you want? Hey, hey, H. How do I become your man? I don't know what that means, but just kick ass, maybe. 
Uh, David Ayers, what's your view on taking vitamins and supplements? I think they're nice when you need an extra bit of help. I don't think there's any such thing as a be all and end all supplement. Whey protein is. I think it's really important to have whey protein because I just don't think it's possible to get in the amount of protein some people need via food. Otherwise, yeah, the ones I, I my go tos are creatine. I don't know why I'm looking over here, but I am creatine, omega threes, vitamin C. That's it, you know. Did I say creatine? Creatine, if you want. That, that I, don't, I, I really don't think supplements. They help a little bit. They're not the be all and end all. Uh, King Awesome, have you ever lost your lifting form? Last year I squatted 220. Did you really? And you are awesome. With really good form. Since I started pro wrestling, I can barely make 180 for rep with horrible form. Tips. Dude, all our bodies change, man. We all have aches and pains. You were training for size, I imagine, and strength beforehand. Now you've introduced pro wrestling. Just accept it, I guess. Accept that you've made a change. It's not the greatest answer in the world, is it? But uh, maybe if you're doing horrible form though, drop it down to 150. Don't get too obsessed with weight if your form's bad because you're injuring yourself. Uh, Drew Shirt, opinions on super giant sets. Love super sets. Again, use them in moderation. Use them when you need them and they'll help you get over you know, any plateaus you may have hit. Same with drop sets, but don't overdo them because your body will get used to them too. Right, we're just going to rack through these. Vince Yarko, do you recommend home gyms? Absolutely, if it works for you. Brad Bourne, I don't know if my question got answered because I just got here, but what is your opinion on barbell or dumbbell complexes? We're gonna, that's a whole video. We'll get to that, I promise. Keep an eye on the channel. Right, we're going to draw a line under it there because no one needs to hear me rant about fitness for almost an hour, which is what we've done. Thank you for everyone that did join me today. Please do make you sub to the channel. We'll do this once every two weeks. So the schedule is going to be one video a week. Uh, next week, we're doing diet. So keep an eye out for that. And then we'll do this... Uh, do this once every two weeks. But thank you for the questions. As you can tell, I love talking about fitness because I'm a massive nerd and a massive loser. Please do sub to the channel. Uh, find me on YouTube at Fitness Games YouTube, also at Simon316. Uh, again, all this is supported by my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Simon316. And yeah, thank you for it's the first one. I really I, I, I think I enjoyed it more than you lot. <laughs> Just I love talking. I mean, I love I love wrestling and I love games. But I think fitness is my is my number one. Shouldn't say that, should I? It changes day by day. I do flip and love. I get to go to the gym in a few hours. <clears throat> right, we'll, we'll call that a day. Like I say, sub, like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. See you soon.